All right, everyone. So, what did I do this week? Absolute game changer. I don't think fluid 3D animation has ever been this easy to achieve. So, let's get into it. You've seen the title, and that is indeed right. This week I learned how to work with Cascadeur for 3D animation. This program is more akin to puppetry as opposed to the brutality that is keyframe-based animation, as it has these awesome AI tools for sprucing up key poses with actual physics. So basically, it cuts out a lot of the work you'd be doing. So to get things started here, we're gonna cut over to Drake from the past, so you guys can come along with me and see my first impressions as I figure out some of the basics. I have no idea what this is. Apparently, the easiest way to animate. Get started. Uh, we're gonna go with that dark mode to save our eyes. Light mode. Okay. Yeah, I should probably watch the learning courses. I'll just use one of these sample models to... Oh, they've got the Unreal Engine things already imported. How radical is that? And look at this! So how, scroll wheel, control, shift, right click, tab, uh, alt, alt, left click for rotate, alt, right click is also zoom, alt, middle mouse, okay, W, E, W, E, and that's up here. So as far as I am aware, rotating this, yeah, you see all that extra motion? It moves the whole arm appropriately, the whole body appropriately. Wow. Shut up, malware bites. Okay. This is cool. We are. We are. This is valuable learning. Oh, oh, I just learned a thing. If you just hold the middle mouse, it just kind of kind of does what you want it to. <laughs> Get some huge hunch in the shoulders, or be very surprised. Yeah, because that's already a better pose than I could have modeled any point before that. And that's just for posing. So what if we? What if we wing it, folks? What if we did that? Can I add a keyframe? Does that add keyframe? That's a create cycle. Okay. Uh, where's the keyframe button? I could read tutorials. Five minutes later. Okay, fine, fine. Sort in the keyframes uh -huh. or keys. Yes, they would. These keys them. are colored dark blue on the timeline. Okay. In our case, we have a key in the zero frame. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> What's the key icon? The key. Okay. We're gonna have this foot come down. Look at that, it knows where the ground is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's a crazy second pose. There's no way this is gonna look good. Oh, okay, okay. This is way too hard of a pose to start on, but that's how you do that. Okay, new scene. And we're back. I stopped recording shortly after that. I hope you've enjoyed my live flailing about. Overall, I was pretty excited by just the posing tools, so now let's talk about an actual process on how to animate with Cascadeur. By default, they have the Unreal Engine mannequins already set up, so for today, we'll be working with those. So you get started by defining your key poses, which is made super easy to do by auto pose. So when you say move the foot, the whole body moves accordingly. So you hit this little key icon for each main pose for your animation, and carefully get your character into position. You're able to select multiple points at a time and move them around, or even copy and paste joint positions from one frame to another. This is useful for things like keeping feet planted. Now with all of your poses set up and selecting all of these frames, you can hit Bezier Clamped to make a smooth motion between them. Which looks... not great but this is where auto physics come in. This magical little button up here to automatically spruce up the animation with AI-driven weights and gravity. By pressing it, you now see a green version of your character, which is now simulating physics. 
which looks a little better, but we can add even more natural motion to this animation by using secondary motion. Enable that over here under the Physics tab. Now when you select some joints, you can adjust their local blending and air friction values to control how loose you want certain motions to be. Once tuned, it looks like this. Now hit this button to snap the model to the physics animation, and within just a few minutes, we've got a pretty dynamic little animation here. So with that, let's make some more. Here's some time lapse, I'll be back in a second. This. This is what 3D animation workflows should be. It's so satisfying, and it really does just work. Like I said, thanks to the auto-posing and AI tools, natural animation has never been more achievable. Like most of my endeavors with 3D art of any type, it's a lot of trial and error, messing around with settings, and in this case, adjusting key positions ever so slightly to achieve a more natural motion. Believe it or not, downloading this program doesn't give you the magical ability to animate. The quality of your final results will largely be determined by the quality of your key poses, which is where reference can really save the day. Fortunately, adjustments can be made in real time, even after physics have been added. The auto physics will adapt to your adjustments live. Before we carry on to some more animation, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Wingfox. They have a ton of really high quality tutorial series on stuff like this, ranging from digital arts to making games. In this case, their latest course is a demonstration on how to make a first person zombie shooter in Unreal Engine 5. This is going to show you how to do first person weapon animations, enemy systems, health, all the basics for making your games. You can pick up this professional course right now for 51% off using my affiliate link in the description. And it helps out the channel. And now, on to another Cascadeur animation. So here's another one. I did a couple more off camera, there will be a full showcase in Unreal Engine of the animations at the end of the video. As you can see by the button in the top left there, I'm making use of an onion skin like tool which allows me to see the previous frames. This is really useful just for knowing where you're at in your animation. Not only can you adjust the key poses, but also the timing or pacing of the frames. And this is worth stressing, if your animation still feels stiff even after adding all of your physics and secondary motion, it's likely due to the spacing of your keyframes being too uniform. I just think back to basic animation and remember that faster moves should of course have less frames in between. You can quickly adjust the spacing of your frames by using the plus and minus keys. This is pretty useful for iterating on your timing. Here's an example of a kick animation before and after repositioning my key poses. Thanks to the timing adjustment, the second one just feels a little bit more natural. We're now coming up upon the last of the recorded footage here and we'll get to a showcase. So without further ado, here's the Cascadeur animations now rendered in Unreal Engine 5. So that's that. You bet this program is going to be a mainstay for projects in the future. I'm looking forward to practicing with it more. Being able to produce 3D animations this quickly has opened up a lot of doors. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please do drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.